It's beautiful, isn't it? Do you think it's important to keep our Earth safe and healthy? I do, I live here. This is where all my food, my water, and my air come from. Did that get your attention? They said, if I needed to tell you something important, I should probably get your attention first. And I do have something important to say. I wanna tell you why doing this can help keep this healthy and safe. Mm, sorry about that. <laughs> and if Earth isn't healthy, we can't be either. In fact, everything that lives on Earth depends on a healthy planet to survive. The three basic things that keep life on Earth going day after day are water, air, and soil. Today we're gonna talk about dirt, but not just any dirt, soil. What is soil? And why is it different from just plain dirt? Dirt is made up of minerals and things like rocks and sand, things that were never, ever alive. Soil is made up of the same stuff, but with two more things added into the mix. The first thing is living things. All kinds of little tiny creatures. Yeah, we're talking about you. They're called microbes. The second thing that soil has that dirt doesn't have is things that used to be alive. You know, stuff that rots. It's called organic material, like dead leaves, plants, and animals. It's what all those things living in the soil eat. It's their food. That's what rotting is. Tiny little organisms eating things that used to be alive. Can you guess how many things live in the soil? There can be as many as one billion living organisms in this little pinch of soil. Do you know how big a billion is? One, two, three. If four, you were to count eight five, hours a day for six, every day of the year, seven, when you got eight, done, you might look nine, like this. 10, 11, 12. You would be 13, over 100 years 14. old. That's how big a billion is. Whew, I'm glad counting to a billion wasn't my homework. There are more living creatures in this scoop of soil than there are people on Earth. So, why do dead things and living things make good soil when they're added to dirt? Because when all those little tiny creatures that live in the soil eat the dead organic stuff, they leave behind compost. Compost is rich in the chemicals and nutrients that plants need to grow. Without compost, plants can't grow. And all of our food comes from plants. Without compost, you wouldn't have any food to eat. Everything we eat comes from plants, vegetables and grains, fruits. I think I'll put that back. Even a hamburger comes from a cow eating plants. So let's review. Out here in nature, things die and fall back to the ground. Down here, all those billions of creatures eat the dead plants and animals, turning it into compost. Save room for dessert. The compost is now food for new plants. Whew. And there it goes, off to become part of the soil again. It's what's called a cycle. Things die and get mixed with dirt, they rot and break down and become food for plants. New plants grow, die, get mixed with the soil, make new food, which makes new plants. <sighs> and around and around it goes. I'm glad it's a slow process, taking weeks, months, or even years, or I'd get really dizzy. So what does this have to do with leftover french fries and other food scraps in the cafeteria? Well, out here in the natural world, when things die, they mostly end up in the dirt themselves. But in our world of buildings and cafeterias, we need to make sure that the leftover food gets back to where it belongs, in the soil. Because if it ends up just getting thrown away, it's wasted. In fact, if you throw it away, you're wasting all the soil, energy, and materials it took to grow it and get it to you. If you collect food for composting, then it becomes food again, and it isn't wasted. But why should we worry about some leftover food? Because there's not a whole lot of good soil and we have to take good care of what there is. We need to keep the cycle going, because if it stops, we're in big trouble. Did you know that if the Earth was the size of this onion, 
the amount of soil on the Earth's surface would be thinner than the thinnest layer on this onion. I'm not talking about the ring. I'm talking about the thin membrane that covers the ring. It's so thin, you can almost see through it. That's not a lot of soil. I love onions. The way you can help is by composting leftover food when you eat at school. You just separate out anything that is food and put it in the compost bin. Remember, if it doesn't look like food, it probably isn't. Well, most of the time anyway. <laughs> Composting at school is simple and easy. There are three steps. Step one, before you leave the lunch table, separate food scraps from the trash. And if you have a milk carton, open it all the way. Step two, start through the sort line and pour out any leftover liquids into the bucket. If you have a milk carton, turn it upside down and put it on the drain rack. That makes it easier to recycle. Step three, put all your food scraps and paper napkins into the green can for composting. Only paper napkins and food scraps go in the green compost can, nothing else. In the gray can, put all the other paper, plastic, and trash. That's it, that's all there is to it. Don't forget to put your tray and silverware where they belong at your school. If you bring your lunch to school, remember to compost your food scraps too. Your teacher can answer any questions you have about how to compost your food scraps at school. So, do you want to see what happens to the food scraps after you put them in here? I do, let's go see. The food scraps come here. Then what happens to them? Well, when the food scraps come to PRC, they're mixed with residential yard debris that's collected from around your neighborhood. And we mix that all together and run it through a grinder to get it all in the same size and texture. Then we take the material and we put it into large piles like this. There are little microorganisms that are in there eating on the organic material, eating on the food, and they're turning it into the finished compost. We take the finished compost back to a screen where we try to remove a lot of contaminants, the plastics, the, the forks that end up uh, coming from the cafeteria. So is it important to keep the trash and stuff out of the compost? Absolutely. It's important to keep the contaminants out of our compost because those things don't break down. So how much stuff exactly comes in here to be composted? We process roughly 120,000 tons of yard debris and food waste every year. So what happens to the finished compost? So the finished compost gets applied to soil and that organic matter and those nutrients are soaked up by the plants to create new food. And that's the circle of life. After the food is composted, it comes here to farms where it's put back into the ground to grow new food like these peas. So why is compost good for the plants? Compost adds nutrients to the soil, and the nutrients to the soil helps these plants grow. It's adding food for them. And sometimes the dirt that we have doesn't have enough. And so by adding compost, you're adding things that all of these plants can eat. By composting your food scraps properly, you keep the cycle going, making sure that you always have healthy and nutritious food to live on. Well, there you have it. By doing this, helps protect this. Soil actually does a lot more. It helps clean our water and our air. It's important stuff. Welcome home. Do your part. Properly compost food scraps when you're at school. It helps everyone, and it doesn't work without you.